daughter is going through it. This was the most egregious video I've seen. And I'm, I'm going to stop short from blaming this young woman because it's still a child. And I also do know this is a private and family matter. And here's the thing. When it comes to like family matters, I always tell people like even be careful about jumping in between relationships between either siblings or even couples. Because what ends up happening, they're going to make up. Like these temporary emotions usually go away because there's a stronger bond. And what you say and what you do is why they're going to dislike you and team up against you to kill you later on. We've seen it in the case where Rick Ross tried to defend... Um, Rick Ross tried to defend uh, uh, Lil Wayne, uh, quote unquote, against Birdman. Birdman still fucking hates his guts, right? Lil Wayne is still calling Birdman daddy, and they're so cool, right? So again, you try to defend one person who you thought was gonna take it, take an advantage, and at the end of the day, he squashed the beef with the nigga you were defending him against, and you're still beef with the guy that he, that you were defending him against. So you gotta watch out for some of these relationships when you know they're inevitably gonna get back or they're gonna be back to cool. However, this was crazy, and this is why, like you know, I think social media empowers any stupid thought or any like these random, you know, uh, if you're not thinking that as I get older and I'm trying to like have kids eventually, right? Bro, I don't want no daughter, bro. By the time I have kids, hopefully I can pick it on the computer. I don't want no goddamn daughter. And the reason why is that the women these days, the young women these days are being mind programmed by such a negative anti-family, anti-purity, um, just idiotic mindset that anytime you hear them open their mouths, they're spewing some idiot like idiocy that just kind of reaffirms why the why reality TV, all these other things that are so influential, are literally just draining society of any type of morals, any type of IQ, and anything else. Boosie's daughter, and again, I'm still excusing her because she's a teen. She in a fit of rage against going against Boosie, basically said she would rather have a father that was a trapper than she would have a father that was a rich celebrity because she doesn't enjoy that. She wants a father who was probably breaking the law. Now, granted, most of the issues she's having with Boosie is because Boosie was incarcerated when she was growing up. She talks about him not being there. She talks about how he wasn't there and how he was on death row and this and third. Why was that happening? Boosie was involved in a life, even if he was found innocent or whatever these charges, he was involved in a street life that took him away from his family. Yet, even though she is like, you know, obviously a product of all that trauma, she's basically saying she would want to do it again. She said the father that she would love is the, Trapper, not the rich famous guy taking care of her. Listen to this shit. Like, like y'all want me to have loyalty for this nigga he don't even have for me. That's not me. I'm sorry, that's not me. I don't care how much money he got. I don't care how big he get. I don't care how low he you get. I don't want I don't want to be a part of that nigga life. I'm glad I don't gotta call nigga my dad no more. He's a bitch. Like for real. Like I'm so like I'm glad like I'm glad like I'm glad 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 and anybody that know me knows when that conversation came up oh do you like being do you like being the um do you like being the um the daughter of a of a person that's um of a person that's famous I always said that it was aggravating I'd rather have I okay I never signed I'd rather have a regular but I said I'd rather have a dad that's trapping or something. Like, don't get me. I was, I'm thankful, but it's just like, it's annoying. I, like, I ain't, like, like, y'all want. Fellas, we're living in a lost society, man. This is how the future mothers, the future queens, this is, this is their mentality. I know you might just excuse me. Well, this is a upset kid ranting. But this is the mentality of a lot of black America. She said something that was very consistent with what I hear a lot from a lot of women. 
No one wants a regular guy that works hard, goes to a regular job, doesn't break the law, pays his taxes, and maybe just doesn't make more than 50, 60. That nobody wants that. They don't want that in the mate, and they don't want that to be their daddy. They either want celebrities or they want drug dealers. It's all about the fast life. So even here saying that, yeah, she don't want a regular daddy, but she definitely want like a, a nigga who trap it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is horrible. Um, Hey, uh, God bless them. And um, I hope they figure out some of their um, family issues. Um, you know, I was making a point last night because I seen even some people it was like, yo, damn, like, yo, act like this is, this is family. Why'd you even post it? Well, Boosie's someone who's super open. And by the way, Boosie's exploiting some of these issues, whether the music video he's talking about in interviews. And that's what I was talking about even the Vlad TV interviews. I'm like, th there is, I'm wondering if Boosie's going to get to a point. By the way, I'm not, this is no slick hate, no nothing. I wonder if he's going to get to a point where he realizes his Vlad TV interviews are so popular, he might have to tone it down. Because anytime he speaks on somebody or he speaks to a situation, it then usually comes back around where he's either having to live on that hill or die on that hill, actually, in terms of not being a hypocrite. Like, for example, he's talking about snitching, and then people find out somebody next to him snitch. And then he's like, you know what I mean? Or, um, shit, some of the attention that it might be bringing, because now he has a Fed case, right? He got arrested, he got a Fed case. And then even now, with his family issues, that he's usually open, but you're, you're on Vlad, basically, talking about your family life is kind of like crazy, right? So I'm wondering if he's going to be like, yo, listen, man, you know, let's not talk about family because that's what a lot of people do, right? You know, a lot of people, when they do interviews, be like, nah, let's not talk about family. Let's not talk about this because he's been pretty open. I'm wondering how that changes for him. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, I think I played this last night, though. Boosie responds to his daughter. He said a few things that was kind of really interesting. Con artists, bro. Straight con artists. I don't want to see his interview. I don't fuck with him. I don't fuck with his children. We don't fuck with them, bro. I think he's talking about like his brother or something like that. I'm black. Now he says I told her that a couple times. He's talking about his daughter because apparently You're fucking right. I told her that. So his daughter put out this video of Boosie being on the phone with his her mom, and Boosie was threatening the mom, right? And, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, Boosie was talking crazy. Like, Boosie was talking about inflicting violence, putting a bag on people. Like, he was talking like a real street nigga. Um, obviously, is that, like, regardless of how ungrateful the daughter is, is that something we, we, we fucking are saying, this is how you deal with your kid? No, but there has to be some type of, I don't want to say law and order, but there has to be some type of respect for authority, right? Um, do I think that Boosie's going to put a bag on? Actually, I don't know. I, it's Boosie. I have no fucking idea. Regardless, I don't really agree with that part, but that's what she played. And Boosie's now responding to it, basically saying, yeah, of course I told him I'll fuck him up, right? And now he's explaining why he said it. A couple times. Yep. I did it. Yep. I did it. <laughs> yep. She was embarrassing the fam. I mean, she was giving her body away <clears throat> at football games in the bathroom, man. I mean, mm, mm, mm. She, that's my biggest fear, man. Having my having a daughter who I love so much go out in the streets and devalue herself that she is the neighborhood cum rag. That she's now looking for validation from men who are just looking to get a nut off. That like that, and even as Boozy talks, I can see like, but he's hurt a little bit. And I do think you know I've heard him in other settings admit that even when he was talking about his son, he was just like, yo, he wasn't there a lot, and he knows that a lot of things happening now. He even said it for his son, kind of, because his son is kind of on some street shit too. And people are like, yo, Boozy, you're rich. It's like Ti said, like, why your son's street? And he, he's, like, admitted, he's admitted a lot that, yo, he kind of fucked up because when he wasn't there, that's why his son grew up like that. And he missed a, a part of his son growing up. But, but, but the same thing with his daughter. He probably has regrets, like, damn, if I was around, maybe I could have showed her the love that she needed or been there to make sure that these things ain't happening. But now he's, she's a little bit older, and he's hearing that niggas is fucking his daughter. 
in the bathroom at football games. Holy. Going to my son's football games, having sex in the bathroom with boys. I mean, I probably told her more than that. Shit. You look hurt. That's the kind of dad I am. Okay. Yeah, he said some other stuff about it, but, but but he was talking about like the baby moms. He also admits in, in a weird way that the mother of his daughter, him and his homeboy had a train with. Mama let nineteen year old boy stay with a fourteen year old. He's talking about the baby mama. By the way, I, that, that, for anybody anybody in high school in here or anybody who just um, graduated high school or in college, the biggest smuts, like anytime I talk to like, you know, a girl, you can find out how long they've been smutting. If they used to be fucking at football games, those are the biggest smuts. The biggest smuts fuck during football game and in stairwells. If they were doing those behaviors in high school, they're smut for life. They're usually going to have multiple kids by early 20s, if not 20. And literally, they're just a neighborhood. You know because you saw women like that when you were in that situation that you're hoping that your daughter ain't that person. So it breaks his heart. His daughter is that. Everybody knows in high school, one in the chat, if you know that one girl from your high school who was sucking at least five niggas off every football game under the bleachers. That There's always that one chick, and I don't know, like usually it ain't even the bathroom, it's the bleachers. For some reason, the bleachers and sucking niggas off go together. You always hope that ain't your sister, and obviously as you get older, your daughter. <laughs> Boosie, listen, no matter if Boosie's driving in an $800,000 car, he could have a million dollars on his neck. He could have an estate that's worth tens of millions. He's done amazing things in his life. There's nothing that could ease that, that, that pain of knowing that your daughter is thotting in the streets, bro. Probably said more than that shit. <laughs> 15 year old man stay with a four smokes weed with a 15 year old daughter. <laughs> they just mad right now because I said some truthful things about her mother. They mad. Everything I said was the truth. Oh yeah, he said he said that shit about the train on the record, and I think he reiterated it like one of these things too. Excellent. Tell her ask her mama, did she do it? See? I told not one lie, not one. One thing I ain't gonna do is lie. I told not one lie. Mm -mm -mm. What I said her mama did, she did. Excellent. Tell her, ask her mama, did she do it? Now, we also have to be in, in the space of accountability. Boosie is dead wrong for having a child with the woman you ran a train with. Like, Boosie, what did you think the possible outcome was? So let's not sit here, though. We're not going to sit here and just blame the child or saying the baby mama just want money. Boosie, if you're running a train on a woman with your partner, that ain't supposed to be the, the, the woman you impregnate. Because even if, okay, whatever, maybe you forgive that she was in a train with you and your homie. If she and her mentality 
is cool with trains being ran on her. That's indicative of how she views herself. How you think she's going to raise your daughter? She's going to raise your daughter. Like most women are going to raise a another woman to embody their morals or their, their life experiences, especially when they don't see nothing wrong with it. So Boosie, you picked this woman to be the, the mother of your child, right? Or at least maybe you slipped up. It could be slip up. Who knows? It probably slip up, right? But still, you have to take that responsibility. That's probably the reason why your daughter is believing being sexualized as an early age or acting out. Or just like how the baby mama was probably seeking validation by having a rapper and his homeboy fuck her at the same time is the reason why your daughter is at the is under the bleachers and in the bathroom at the football games trying to have the local like athlete fuck her or suck she's sucking him off at the same time. That's just what it is. We gotta be honest. So my I mean it's the truth. I mean I don't think she knew about that. So, okay, now we're talking about my high school experiences. Somebody says, yo, act, keep it a bean. You was under the bleachers, be honest. I'm going to keep it a hundred. I was the nigga in, in high school. You know, I ain't never lie to y'all. I was the nigga who was hating on them niggas that was under the bleachers because I never got invited. I was no fucking athlete. It was like the athletes and drug dealers that was getting their dick sucked under there. I was one of those in high school. So the biggest whores who usually like, like I wanted to hit two, they never let me hit. They was sucking off the other niggas. I ain't gonna cap with you. You feel me? So yeah, after I heard her stories, but like, oh yeah, you know, so and so she sucked off four niggas. I was hating. Fuck them bitches. I'm like, yeah, I was hating though. I was. I was like, damn. How come every time the bleacher story come around, I'm never to be found? <laughs> I never got invited to the bleacher sessions. Chat, keep it a bean. Do not lie to me. Do not lie to me. Were you part of the bleacher crowd? Because everybody want to act like they were cool in high school. I wasn't really that cool in high school. Actually, I wasn't cool at all. I was just like this Jamaican kid that people like, like I really was, I, like my high school didn't even really accept me because like everybody grew up together and I came in like end of middle school type shit. And um, yeah, so by the time I'm in high school, like I, I, I get to hang out with like this Jamaican crowd, but it's not the popular crowd. So yeah, all, all, all them stories I was never a part of. You was a part, the dugout crowd. Tenacious, tenacious OB. Oh, oh, you were one of the baseball. What the baseball players get it in too? Damon Harris says, I never share. I ain't gonna lie. You either not black or you, ne you never went to public school. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Yo, for whatever reason, like again, maybe things has changed, but I'm speaking very honestly and candidly. And this is why I'm glad that, you know, we have our, you know, our, our place, safe place we can speak. Back in, back in high school. Back in high school, people made trains seem hella cool. Like it was kind of like, like I'm so I, I like obviously as a grown man, it seems disgusting, right? But like in high school, because it felt like you were part of the gang. <laughs> now, granted, I never did that, but the allure, like even hearing other people talk about it, like niggas wasn't on some oh I don't share. Like niggas was definitely hyping up trains like it was popping. You get what I mean? Like, yo, high school and middle school, niggas is, well, actually, <laughs> at least when I was going to middle school, may maybe I was, just, I was just, like, learning American culture at that point because I didn't know These days, people fucking in middle school. Back when, I don't think they were fucking in middle school. I don't know. I don't know. I knew they were fucking in high school. People fucking in middle school? But trains and shit like that are popular in high school, bro. Like, that should be seeming cool. Obviously, the older you get, like, yo, could you imagine, like, being in a train and, like, you're 24? <laughs> like, yo, yo, like, and bragging about it. Like, oh, yeah, like, this is good. Like, no, nigga, you just, you might do a train, but you ain't going to finna brag about it. In high school, there's mad stories going around, like, yeah, I ain't going to lie, the football players ran a train on her. Oh, shit, this. And she probably, she mad about her brother, man, you know. He playing spades with Tupac right now. What? She said, her, he said his baby mama's brother playing spades with Tupac. <laughs> we love Pac. And 
And she probably she mad about her brother, man. You know, he playing spades with Tupac right now. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate involved. I was trying to get my daughter from that situation, man. You know. Yo. Uh Creole boy, thank you for the IRE subscription. He says, yo, act. Most of them niggas who got head under the bleachers didn't graduate. That's a fact. Yo, I swear. Because y'all named one nigga who was getting, like, there was oh, there was always that one nigga who you've never seen him go to class. Matter of fact, you don't even know if he even went to your school. But, of course, he did one sport, so you kind of knew. You never seen him in class, but he was, like, good as hell at track or something like that. I'm thinking about one person at my school. Good as hell at track. He was fucking all the bitches. I've always said most of them niggas, their life peak at like 18. Like, nigga, high school is like their peak of their life. It's all downhill from that. It's all downhill. So, yeah, you're right. Most of them niggas probably under the bleachers probably didn't graduate. You're right. How you go from Alpharetta, Georgia, Catholic school, I mean, private school, making straight A's, to letting the 19 year old. Live with a 14 year old. Wait, Boosie's daughter is 14 and she was getting dicked down by a 19 year old? Yeah, I'd be tight too. What the fuck? Isn't that like statutory stuff? Play about my daughters. Like even Adam Twenty Two will tell you that's illegal. I don't play about my daughter. Sam Crow, what up, bro? You lucky I ain't told a more name. You doing shit at you, 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 you giving away yourself in the bathroom at a at, at games <laughs> at my son football games. Damn. I ain't going for it. I don't regret nothing I see. His son playing tight end and his daughter in the bathroom playing wide receiver. Holy. Holy. His son on the field playing tight end. His daughter in the bathroom being a wide receiver. Holy. My man is sad. Talking about me. What kind of mama do that? Now, uh, let me uh, skip to this other footage. So his daughter mentions, yo, like, Boosie should have stayed on death row. And basically, like, I guess this guy who he, Boosie was accused of killing, that's why he was on death row. I guess they're, the family of the baby mama must, like, know him a little bit or whatever. But, but this is what the daughter said. I mean, not like he the only one that was on the death penalty. Should have stayed on there. That's how I'm feeling. And, oh, wow. and I don't yeah, take it back. That, that's what that is. And then life. So she's wishing her father stayed on the death penalty or the death row or whatever. A celebrity get in my head. Who? Who? I ain't no yes man or nobody. And that's what y'all expect me to do. Be a yes man to that nigga. What? Because he my daddy? Mm. 
Well, not even my daddy, cause he my sperm donor. Ooh. Nigga don't even deserve a title. That's why he called sperm donor now. Like what? I don't like all that. Then I gotta hear from about this on live. Talk about no celebrity getting my head. Who? Who? You wanna talk about going to jail? You stuck with people that'll get it though. Let's talk about it. You a rat. You oh a rat. God. You a Boozy's in hip hop pointing out everybody else rats and his own daughter's calling him a rat. You you a rat? Who calls who call um the people B R P D? Who call? Ooh, y'all love B R P D and B R. That's why I'm glad I don't stay down there no more. Anyway, ooh. okay. So Boosie ended up, which I don't know why he did this. He went on live and he talked about the like the person in question that was murdered in the case that he was locked up in, and this is how he describes the nigga. He basically says the nigga who got killed. That he was charged with killing the guy? He said, basically, he said that guy was a piece of shit. Listen to this shit. Five different times. When he got shot the last time, that was his sixth time getting shot. So don't act like I was on trial for a good Samaritan. Let me run it again. He was a convicted child rapist. What? Convicted. What? He beat five murder charges. Five? He was a known robber in the city. He beat his mama with a two by four. He been shot 29 times on six different occasions. Nah, this nigga gotta be Wolverine. Ain't no way a nigga gets shot 29 times on six occasions. You know the craziest part? Somebody in the comments says, nigga, 29 divided by 6 is 4.8 shots per shooting. This nigga must have been in the fucking Avenger. <laughs> what the hell? How the hell a nigga been shot 29 times? If anybody came to my trial, you would have saw his body up there with 29 marks in it. 29 times shot over... On six different occasions. He beat five bodies. Let's, let's talk about it. He's a convicted child rapist who was fucking her and her little sister Draco. What? I ain't snitching on nobody, he did. <laughs> I ain't snitching on nobody. He dead. He playing spades with Tupac right now. Now he playing spades with Tupac. He dead. I've always thought that Tupac would be more like a Domino's type of nigga, maybe poker, not spades. Let's keep it real, man. They act like I was on, like I was on trial for a college student. Man, they act like I was on trial for a college student, man. This man was a convicted child rapist. Was fucking all his sisters. Yo, niggas saying that nigga had a Juice World concert right now. Like, why Boosie still talking about me, man? <laughs> I'm just trying to sing Lucid Dreams one more time. Like, why Boosie still talking about me like in the real world, man? Beat five bodies. Damn. Now let's keep it real, man. Don't act like I was on trial for a college dude. He got shot 29 times, yeah, five cool. different occasions. He was a black cat. He was a black cat. Ridiculous, crazy. Anyway, um, a couple more things. 